Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the revised GRE. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure it's the second edition that you purchase. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 123. Please turn to it, page 123, problem number 4. It is the exact same problem that we solved long time ago on day number 17. I'm going to redo this problem at a little bit of a faster pace and then I'm going to give you a whole bunch of bonus problems. So the one problem that you see there where they're asking for 57 raised to n and then that's the way we're going to do right now and then we're going to have a few more bonus problems if you will. So question here is which of the following could be the unit digits units digit of 57 raised to n. The key here is to understand that they are ask, they're asking us only for the unit digit. We are not interested in what is 57 times 3, 57 times 57. For example, 57 raised to 1, of course, ends in a 7. So 7 is a possibility, obviously, that you can very easily see it. What happens when it's 57 raised to 2? 57 raised to 2, 57 raised to 2 would be same as 57 times 57. 57 times 57. Again, we are not interested in what 57 times 57 is. If you if you try to multiply it out, or 57 times 57 will be there forever and ever because we have to find out all the possible uh, all the possibility of what this uh, result might end in, what the unit digit might be. We are only interested in the unit digit. So 57 times 57, what we need to understand is that 57 times 57, whatever the hell it is, must end in 7 times 7. 7 times 7 is 9. That's it. It's going to end in a 9. It's going to, it's going to end in a 9. That's all we're interested in. So 7 was possible. This is 57 raised to 1. 57 raised to 1 ends in a 7. 57 raised to 2 ends in a 9. So 9 is a possibility. Let's do 57. Let's, do, let's multiply it by 57 one more time. And that will represent 57 times 3. And that will result in a 9 times 7. 9 7 plus 63. It's going to end in a 3. It's going to end in a 3. And that's all we need. It's going to end in a 3. 57 raised to 3 is going to end in a 3. Let's do one more. Multiply it by 57 one more time. Now we have 3 times 7 is going to end in a 1. 57 times 4 is going to end in a 1. And if you don't believe me, pick up your calculator and do it out. 57 then square it and then square it again. That's, that'll be 57 raised to 4. And you will see that it ends in a 1. So, so far we're getting a unique answer here, so we're going to keep on going until we begin to see a pattern. It's going to begin to repeat itself. As soon as we hit a 7, it's going to begin to repeat itself. So let's multiply by 57 one more time, and that would represent 57 raised to 5. And there you go, 1 times 7 is 7. And once we hit a 7, it's going to repeat itself. So 7 is on, there you go, we got, we got a 7, it's repeating itself. So this is 7, the next, next time around it's going to be 57. The 7 times 57 is going to be 7 times 7 is a 9 and so on and so forth. So the answers were it's going to end in a 7, it's going to end in a 7, it's going to end in a 7, it's going to end in a 9, it's going to end in a 3, it's going to end in a 1, and it's going to end in a... That's it. 1, 3, 7, 9. 1, 3, 7, 9. That's it. We're done. Here's your next problem. Here's the next problem. Let's do it here. Which of the following could be the units digit of 19 raised to n? Do it yourself. Pause the video. Pause the video. Make sure you pause it. Do it yourself. Do the same same logic, uh, logical uh, uh, reasoning, uh, same logical steps. That is, logical reasoning is redundant. Uh, there is no such thing as illogical reasoning. Uh, because if it were illogical, it wouldn't be reasoning. Anyway, uh, do the same logical steps and uh, see what you come up with. Do you understand? So let's, let's, uh, let's do it. I hope that you did it yourself. Pause the video as I said, and, and then we'll do it again. So same exact thing. So 19, 19 raised to 1, 19 raised to 1. 19 raised to 1, of course, is just 19. It ends in a 9. So here's our 19 raised to n. 19 raised to n, 57 raised to n, 
0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. 19 raised to 1 and 0 and 9. Multiply it by one more time by 19. And that would represent 19 raised to 2. And that's 9 times 9, that's 81, it's going to end in a 1. And then multiply one more time, 19, and that would represent 19 to the third. And again, that's 1 times 9 is 9. You see, it begins to repeat itself. As soon as you see the same thing as before, before we started out with a 9, then we had a 1, and then we have a 9 again. That's the end of the story. That's it. In this case, there are only two possibilities. 19 raised to any power will always end in either a 9 or a 1. Either a 9 or a 1. That's it. We're done. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. We're going to do several more than a pyramid effect. 26 raised to n. 26 raised to n. So, 26, 26 raised to 1 is just 26. It ends in a 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It ends in a 6. Let's multiply it by one more time, 26. And that will represent 26 raised to 2. 6 times 6 is 36. It ends in a 6 again. Multiply by 1 more times 6, and you will see that it's going to end in a 6 again. 26 raised to 3rd. So that was a silly question. 26 raised to any power, as a matter of fact, anything that has a unit digit of 6, when you raise it to any power, it always ends in a 6. It never changes. Because it's always 6. 26, we start out with 26, then 26 times 26 is 6 times 6 ends in a 6, and then multiply by 36 again. Again, we get 6 times 6 in a unit digit. The answer is only 6. Let's do one more. Oh, we didn't change this part. This, this should have said 26 raised to n for the one that we just finished. The next one is 32 raised to n. So 32 raised to first power is just 32. 32 raised to n. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Multiply by 32 one more time and we find that it ends in a 4. 32 raised to 2 is going to end in a 4. It's going to end in a 4. So we start out with 2. 32 raised to 1 is 2. 32 raised to 2 ends in a 4. Let's multiply it by 32 one more time. That's 4 times 2. That's going to end in an 8. 32 raised to 3 is going to end in an 8. We have to keep on going until we begin to repeat ourselves. It, uh, again, again, when we hit two, again, when we hit a two, because we started out with the two, then we had a four, and then we have an eight. Multiply by thirty-two one more time, and that ends in a six. Eight times two is sixteen. That's thirty-two raised to four, so that's a six. Multiply by thirty-two one more time. Six times two is twelve. There you go. It ends in a two. It ends in a 2, you see? We hit the 2 again, that's the 2 right there. We are, we are finished. It's going to repeat. The cycle is going to repeat itself. So we have 2, we have 2, we have 4, we have 6, and we have 8. All the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's do one more. Twenty-five raised to n. Let's see what that gives us, shall we? Can you can you figure it out right away? Think. Twenty-five raised to the first power is it's going to end in a, in a five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's just going to end in a five. Multiply it by twenty-five one more time, and that represents twenty-five raised to two. And we get 5 times 5, which is going to end in a 5 again. Multiply that by one more time, by 25, and it's going to end in a 5 again. So 25, anything with a unit digit of 5 raised to any power is the exact same scenario as the one that we did a little while ago, where any number with a unit digit of 6 being raised to any power always ends in a 6. Similarly, any number with a unit digit of 5 being raised to any power will always end in a 5. doesn't matter what it is, whether it's 25 raised to 57 or whether it's 25 raised to 3037. 3, it's going to end in a 5. 
That's it. That was that part. Let's move on. 43. We have next one. Forty-three raised to n. So forty-three raised to the first power, of course, is just forty-three, and that ends in a three. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. That ends in a three. Let's multiply by forty-three one more time, and that represents forty-three squared, and that's going to end in a three times three, which is a nine. I don't know why I circled them. It's going to end in a 9 before it ended in 3. Let's multiply by 43 one more time. 9, 3 is at 27. Now we get a hang of it, so it's going to end in a 7. 43 cubed is going to end in a 7, because 9, 3 is at 27. Multiply by 43 one more time, and we get 9, 7, 3 is at 21. And whatever it is, it's going to end in a 43 raised to 4, it's going to end in a 1. Multiply by 43 one more time, and that represents 43 raised to 5, and that's going to end in a 3. It's going to end in a 3, you see? We hit a 3 again. We started out with 3, and we hit a 3 again. As soon as we hit the same number, same, same unit digit, we are done. So we have 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, oh, and 7, sorry. We have 1, 3, 7, and 9. 1, 3, 7, and 9. But not a 5. Not a 5, of course. In order for it to end in a 5, we have to multiply something with either, we have to multiply something that, that ends in either a 1 or a 5, obviously. And since we have a 43, we're not going to get a 5. Let's, let's do one more. 14 raised to n. 14 raised to the first power is just 14. 14 raised to n. These are all bonus problems. Do you understand? In the book, they're only asking you for something ending in a 7. And then after, after, having, all of the, after having done all of these problems, in the future, you will never have a difficulty with a problem such as this one. It'll be, it'll be a sim simple thing to do. 14 raised to 1 ends in a 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Ends in a 4. Multiply by 14 one more time, and that's going to end in a... That product of 14 times 14 is going to end in a 4 times 4 is six, 16. 4 fours are 16. Multiply by 14 one more time, 6 fours are 24. And that's 14 raised to 3. 6 fours are 24. There you go, we, to, we hit a 4 again. We started out with 4 and we ended with a 4. So it's just a 6 and a 4. So that was it, very easy. 6 and a 4, that's it, we are done. Let's do one last one, 28 raised to n. And then we are done. 28 raised to 1 is just 28. I don't know why I decided to do this problem right now, because I'm very hungry at the moment. So let's finish it up, shall we? So I can have my lunch. 28 raised to 1 is just 28 ends in an 8. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ends in an 8. Multiply by 28 one more time, and you get 28 raised to 2. And that's going to end in a 6. 8, 8 times an 8, 8, 8, 8 is a 64. Ends in, ends in a 4. Multiply that by 28, and that's going to be 4, 8 is a 32. It ends in a 32. 28 raised to 3. It's going to end in a 2. Multiply by 28 one more time. 2 is a 16. And that's going to end in a 28 raised to 4. It's going to end in a 6. And then a 6. We had an 8, then we had a 4, then we have a 2, then we have a 6. And that's it. It's going to begin to repeat itself. We might multiply by 28. 8, 6 is a 48. 8, 6 are 48, sorry. 8, 6 are 48 and it repeats itself. It has to repeat itself because I just realized that we have used up all the even numbers. And it's going to end in an even number because we're multiplying 28, which is an even number. Even number times an even number and always has to be an even number. So since we have exhausted all the, all the even uh, digits here, 2, 4, 6 and 8, 
obviously it's going to repeat itself because it's not going to end in a zero. In order for something to end in a zero, you have to multiply it by 10, obviously. That's it. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, and 8. That's all. I will see you tomorrow. Let's see what we have for tomorrow. I will see you tomorrow where we'll continue with the problems that you see on page number 124, 125, and 126. On page 126, if you, look, if you turn to page 126, question number 5 on page 126 is what is known as a work problem. We're going to do quite a few of those problems just for practice. They, all, they have only one in the book right now on page 126. And we're going to do two more after that. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.